Hey everybody, welcome back to Maya Mondays. So this week what I'm doing is basically plugging my webinar that I'm working on currently that's going to be given on the 20th of May. And that's next Tuesday. And it's basically an XGen uh, class. It's about 45 minutes long. It'll cover off an introduction to XGen as well as some slightly more advanced topics. And I'll be also kind of throwing in a little bit of tips and tricks and workflow things that I've sort of figured out over the last year or so that I've had working with XGen. So obviously it won't cover everything in XGen. It would need much more time than 45 minutes to cover that, but it will give you a good a good taste of sort of some introduction stuff as well as some intermediate stuff and maybe a little bit more advanced things as well as some tips and tricks. So it doesn't matter if you're new to XGen and you've never seen it before or if you've used XGen for the last year, there's a good chance you may pick something up if you take the time to go ahead and watch the webinar. If you don't get a chance to watch it, don't worry. I'll be taking that data that I'm using to um, to present in the webinar and sort of backfilling my blog posts with it. So the stuff will kind of trickle into the, um, the desk blog that I do every week anyway on Maya Mondays. So last week I mentioned that there was a service pack that came out for Maya 2015 and really make sure you go and grab that service pack. It adds a lot of nice bug fixes to XGen as well as Bifrost, so you definitely want to pick it up. So I'm going to just highlight a couple of those bug fixes that were added in the service pack today. Um, and this will give you a quick introduction to the types of things that we'll be talking about inside of the, the class, too, little tips and things like that. So what I've got in my scene here is I've got a directional light, and prior to 2015's service pack, if you turned on hardware shadows and you had an XGen description in your scene, the hardware shadows didn't work with directional lights, and obviously you can see that they are currently working. As I move that light around here, you can see those updated shadow maps both on the hair and the geometry. So for me personally, this is a big deal because I was lighting all my demo scenes with, with spotlights, and, you know, that's kind of limiting to, to get them to show up the way I want. So I'm kind of psyched that the directional light shadows now work correctly in Viewport 2.0, which is, which is a big help. The other thing that I want to talk about quickly is um, just a simple example of something that was added in 2015 that we actually didn't show in the new feature videos because it was a little flaky. The updrop or the update in the viewport wasn't always working 100% and the, the service pack actually addressed that. And that's the ability to have different shading models applied to the hair. So if we go ahead and we look at this hair, Obviously, I've got just a simple Fong map on there that's being driven by a UV texture map that's driving the color of this. And we can now add a different um, hair shading model onto that. So if we grab this guy right here, maybe uh, select the objects that are associated with that, that hair and assign this new material to it, you can see obviously now our hair goes through and it's got this really nice kind of long, drawn-out highlight. And obviously, if we want to over-exaggerate that, we can just increase that X value a little bit and it's going to tighten up that highlight. We can play around with things like the roughness and you can see that all that updates correctly inside of the viewport. So we're getting a really nice representation of how that specular model is going to work directly in viewport 2.0 before we commit to the software render. Another thing that was added in 2015 that um, that we didn't go over in the new feature video again because the the update of the sliders wasn't working until the service pack came out is the ability to uh, to add ramps so you can have the ramps down transparency and incandescence it doesn't really matter where they are the ramps give you the ability now to obviously color this based on on these on these ramp values down the length of the hair so really simple little things but they actually make working with XGen's hair a little bit more native feeling to the Maya workflow, and it really does add a good bit of um, usability to XGen. So it's a couple of simple little things that that have been improved with that service pack of Maya 2015. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Tune in next week on Tuesday. The webinar is being done in a couple different geos, so there'll be different time zones that you can tune in to watch it. I'll be online um, taking questions and trying to answer questions about the webinar as it goes along. And I, I really hope you guys get a chance to, uh, to join in. Thanks for taking a look.